What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back for another UU Live. I feel like I haven't done one of these in so long, probably because I missed last week's, but uh, we are back today for a live in the UU tier, of course. And we are using a Pokemon that um, was suggested or hinted at in a video that I watched recently, and I really wanted to try it out. That is Banded Conkeldur. You guys see that at the very beginning of the team. Uh, we're rocking Iron Fist. Um, choice banded hammer arm, which there just are no switch ins. Uh, poison jab, mock punch, and knock off to be able to hit ghosts, of course. Uh, banded mock punch with iron fist is just ridiculous. Uh, then we have uh, Agron, our bird check, because Conk Elder can't take on birds nor can it take on psychic types, so that's pretty good for that. Uh, your standard uh, Agron set, I replaced Earthquake with Thunder Wave because it's good for slowing down Pokemon for Conk Elder. Next, we have Choice Specs uh, Espeon over here. Uh, we have one more Choice Mon at the end of the team, you guys probably saw it already. Uh, but Choice Specs with Psy Shock, Dazzling, Gleam, Shadow Ball, and Trick, very nice for cleaning up teams. Uh, Hydreigon here with Life Orb, Draco Meteor, Dark Pulse, Iron Tail, and U-Turn. Uh, so very offensive set, a little bit of attack investment. Not too much speed, just 285 enough to outrun Chandelure, which is a little bit of an issue for this team. Next we have Nino King. Also, it's 295 speed, so also another uh, good answer to Chandelure, if it's not behind a sub, of course. Uh, we got Earth Power, Sludge Wave, Ice Beam, and Flamethrower. And finally, we have Infernape over here, uh, our fastest Pokemon on the team. Rocking uh, 252 Adamant Nature with U-Turn Close Combat, Flare Blitz, and Gunk Shot. So, extremely offensive team. Probably the most offensive team that I've ever built. Uh, we're going to try to find a battle right here. It's kind of late, so hopefully we'll be able to get one. And uh, I'll actually pause it until we get one, guys. We'll be right back. Alright, we got one, guys. And I was, like, just so ready to say, where are this guy's uh, switch-ins to a hammer arm? But he actually has some. Uh, he has the Fortress and the Sylveon. Um, are we rocking jab on this thing? We are. Okay, cool. So Sylveon is not a switch into Archon Kelder. I in no way, shape, or form. Against this team, I really want to just lead Infernape because of the Crocodile. Uh, it's a very obvious lead, and it seems to be Scarf Moxie, which we outspeed. Uh, more than likely. I'm just going to go for a U-turn right here. I don't lose much. He takes half his health, and we can pretty much safely go into Hydreigon on this thing. Uh, it's not going to threaten us with anything, pretty much. Goes for the Earthquake. Obviously, we are immune, and uh, he forfeits immediately, so uh, let's continue. <laughs> that was a very, very quick game. I thought, I guess he figured losing his Crocodile was the end of the game. Um, <laughs> luckily, Infernape has enough speed to outspeed Scarf Crocodile. I might actually just tone this down a little bit and put a little more in HP. Uh, just bring it to 312, I think is perfect. Um, yeah, because this outspeeds Beedrill and stuff, so it does, doesn't really matter. Uh, there are no other Scarfers in the tier that I can think of at the present time uh, that would be able to outspeed this. Perhaps maybe a base 100, uh, but even that, I mean, uh, what kind of base 100 Scarfers are there in UU? Not many. Um, I think probably Porygon Z can outspeed us, but I mean, we have a pretty good answer in, uh, in Agron. Uh, if it's Choice Specs, it doesn't outspeed Infernape. If it's Choice Scarf, it doesn't do anything to Aggron. So, uh, that's pretty much that. And we got one. Alright, cool. So, uh, my opponent has a Fire, Water, Grass core coupled with a Double Fighting and Dark core. Alright, interesting. Uh, very cool. Um, I really feel like just leading off with Conkeldur here is uh, perfectly safe, I would say. Um, yeah, I'm just going to lead off with Conk. And pretty much something dies to a hammer arm, except maybe Heracross. Like, that's the only thing I can see that doesn't go straight down. Uh, he does lead with his Rotom Heat. I'm assuming he's going to burn us. So I kind of want to switch out into uh, Espeon right here to bounce it back and go for a Dazzling Gleam on the following turn, because it hits a lot of his team. Uh, or switch back into Conkeldur, that's also a play. Or I might just go for a hammer arm here. I don't have any form of, uh, of healing on this team, that's the one problem. Uh, I'm actually just going to go straight into Infernape here. Uh, it's pretty much my safest play. He goes goes for the Will-O-Wisp, that's great. And uh, I'm just going to throw off a close combat here, get some damage on this Rotom, put it in range of Choice Banded Mach Punch, basically. Uh, as he goes for the Volt Switch, it's going to do a lot to us, but it's fine. We can still conserve this for later. Uh, it's very good for the Sceptile, for the, uh, for the Hydreigon, things like that. Uh, he actually goes straight into Sceptile, which is very interesting. Uh, I might just close combat this thing, honestly. Like, why Why not? Alternatively, I have a pretty good switch in Agron, but if he goes for a Giga Drain, I don't want to take that damage. Yeah, I'm just going to go for a close combat. That's fine. Uh, this thing is going to get crit and get go straight down. So very unfortunate for my opponent. Very fortunate for us. We're able to get rid of his uh, Sceptile, which is probably one of the biggest threats to my team. Uh, this is another one right here, as you guys can see. Uh, Choice Scarf doesn't outspeed me, though, which is nice. 
Uh, I can probably just go into Nido King right here and uh, see what he wants to do. He goes for the knockoff, which is not able to knock us out. I want to see if that's banded Heracross. I think it is. Heracross, choice band versus uh, Nido King. Uh, offensive. Uh, no, just UU wall breaker. Knockoff is. Okay, no, it's stronger than that. So that's not uh, actually banded. It's scarfed, I guess. I'm going to go for the flamethrower right here as my opponent chooses to switch out into Rotom Heat. This is not taking a flamethrower plus sludge wave combination. So uh, unless he is also scarfed, uh, that's going straight down. So now show me his switch ins to a hammer arm or even a mock punch for that matter. Uh, his Hydreigon chooses to come in. I'm just going to Ice Beam here. Uh, my opponent goes for a Draco. Good play. Gets rid of us right there. And uh, now we can just go into, I think, Infernape and fire off yet another close combat. Uh, yeah, let's go for it. I, know, I really wanted to go into Conk there, but, like, no. Let's just get rid of this Hydreigon this way. It's a lot better. Uh, basically, I didn't want him switching into Heracross for free. That was my, uh, my thought process right there, guys, if you were wondering. And now he can go into Heracross, and it's perfectly fine. Um... I'm assuming the fighting move is coming. Um, what does Espeon do? Espeon doesn't do anything else this game. It was really there for Hydreigon, for Sceptile and stuff like that. Goes for the close combat. He's going to get the drops. And uh, he should be Scarfed. I mean, that's what we calc. Yeah, okay, there we go. Uh, except now we have a Scarfed Infernape that's faster. So uh, let's go into that. And we just fire off a Flare Blitz right here. Uh, knock out this Heracross. He should know that we're Scarfed, so he's going to pull a switch into Empoleon, so good play. Uh, that's going to take 65%, put us into Blaze, actually, uh, which, I mean, if he switches into Lucaro here, it could be bad, because we actually could lose to the Heracross. So what I'm going to do is just go into Hydreigon. Uh, if he gets up rocks, he gets up rocks, it's fine. He goes for Scald, though, that's awesome, and we are able to... Hit this thing up with, uh, I think, a, um, I might just go for U-turn, honestly. And go into Conk Elder. Well, I mean, Conk comes in on the, uh, on Lucario and just mock punches it anyway, right? So, yeah, let's go for, um, let's go for the Dark Pulse. Just knock this thing out. All right, never mind. That's not able to knock it out. That's max special attack modest, by the way, guys. Um, just gonna go for a, another Dark Pulse, a Dark, uh, dark Pulse here. Uh, goes into Lucario, gets the attack boost. It's not a big deal, though. He has to go for an E-Speed right here, basically, and I'm just going to drop a Draco on this thing. Uh, goes for the E-Speed, knocks us out, but now his E-Speed doesn't take out our Conkelder in no way, shape, or form. So I'm just going to go into that, and we will click the Mach Punch, I believe. Um, Hammer Arm, alternatively, might be a better play, uh, just because of the Heracross coming in after. So... No, I'm going to go for Mach. That's fine. Able to take out the Lucario. That's great. He can now go into Heracross, but at this point, the game's pretty much over. Uh, I just have to click uh, Mach Punch a couple of times, and then close combat, and this should be done. So let's go for that. Go for the Mach. Does 30. Very nice. He goes for the close combat. That's going to knock us down to 42%. And we will go for the Mach Punch again. Basically, get a crit. All right. <laughs> and uh, now he's definitely in range of close combat, so... Uh, that's pretty much game over. We go into our Infernape and we click Close Combat twice, and that is game. And we are 8 minutes deep with 2 wins. Uh, I won't count the first one, of course. Uh, my opponent decides to switch out into Empoleon. It doesn't really matter at this point. I guess he thought I would go for Flare Blitz, but his Heracross is clearly in range of Close Combat, so... Uh, that's going to be it for Mr. Promiscuous Frog over there. Uh, we're going to get another game immediately. Uh, very threatening team. I don't like the Beedrill. <laughs> it scares me uh, a little bit. I didn't really plan for Beedrill too much. Uh, I guess Infernape's not bad for it. Uh, I'm actually going to lead with Agron this game because uh, it matches up well against the Beedrill. And if he wants to protect on turn one, then I can get up my rocks. He might also predict that and go directly into Espeon, which would be a little bit of an issue. Um, I also see very few Mock Punch uh, switch-ins. Like when I'm against the, uh, specifically the Infernape, the Heliolisk, and the... Um, uh, and the Cobalion, I can pretty much throw those out. So he leads with uh, Ariana Grande, uh, the Espeon, and I'm gonna go uh, directly for the Heavy Slam. He goes into his Rotom, good play. Uh, this should take absolutely nothing from this, 14%, as you can see. Uh, he doesn't seem to have uh, leftovers, which me it leads me to believe he might be Specs from the way he brought it in. Rotom Heat, uh, Choice Specs. Do you take out Agron from full? I don't think you do. Mega Agron, Mega Agron, actually Overheat does take us out. I'm going straight into Hydreigon, I'm not messing around with this thing. Uh, he does just go for the Volt Switch, so good play. Um, obviously, if I went for another Heavy Slam right there, that would have been awesome, but 
can't always get what we want. Um, he can't comfortably go into Espeon right here, knowing that I could be Scarfed. He's actually going to go Beedrill, so that's, uh, that's probably the correct play right there. I'm going to go into Infernate on this thing, as uh, he's probably going to protect on this turn, as he does. Awesome. And I do not see a Flare Blitz switching. So he goes for Protect. That's fine. Again, I do not see a Flare Blitz switch in on your entire team, my friend. Uh, he does go into his Rotom. This is not going to appreciate this. It's going to take 32%. I'm whittling this thing down. If he wants to go for the uh, Volt Switch right here, I'm going to switch in Nido King. I think this thing is Scarfed at this point. So I am just going to go straight into Nido. Uh, he should predict this. Uh, as he does go for Rest. Okay, so maybe it's not Scarfed. Uh, it's Resto Chesto. Yes, it is. All right, cool. Um, I... Also, don't see a Sludge Wave switch in on your team. Uh, so you're going to take 53% right back. He's going to go for Overheat. He's going to leave me at 33. I'm assuming the uh, switch into Cobalion or into maybe Infernape is coming. I'm going to go for the Earth Power right here. As we do catch the Cobalion, so we were able to knock that thing out because it is not Shuka. And uh, his Rotom is very weak, so it doesn't switch into uh, two Flare Blitzes, which is awesome. As uh, Ariana Grande is going to come right back out. We're going straight into Agron. Not messing around with this thing. He goes to the Dazzling Gleam. That's absolutely fl uh, flying. Fine. I'm messing up my words right now, man. It is so late. Uh, I'm going for Stealth Rocks. Uh, that did not pan out. Uh, I'm going to click Stealth Rocks again. Because I'm stubborn. And I'm expecting him to switch. But he's not going to do that. I'm going to go for Heavy Slam at this point. Because I don't have a choice. Uh, or else I'm going straight down. He goes for the Shadow Ball. That's fine. Uh, we're going to go for the Heavy Slam, get a crit, knock him down to his Sash, which is good to know. And uh, Shadow Ball is coming my way once again. I know he has Dazzling Gleam, but now he's in range of Mach Punch, which is amazing. I think his Rotom might also be uh, as crazy as, the, as that sounds. Now that we know he's Rotom Heat uh, Defensive. Do, do you die to Conkelder? I have to change so many things on this set. Like, I have to make it um, Iron Fist... Uh, over here, I have to make this choice banded, and I hope to have to hope it has Mach Punch on the set. It does 40 to 47, so it's not necessarily a knockout. I could just go into my own Espeon here, to be honest, uh, but he is firing off Shadow Balls, so maybe that's not the best play. Yeah, let's just go for Heavy Slam. He goes for a Dazzling Gleam this time. That might not have even taken us out right there, but uh, he does get the roll. Um, I think I think Infernape is always my play, and then just go for a U-turn, or... Even close combat at this point. That might be it. Conk Elder is also nice because he doesn't have a switch in. Yeah, I'm going to go Conk, honestly. Uh, and just mock because this thing has to stay in at this point. It's uh, If he switches out into anything, it's going to take a tremendous amount of damage. So uh, my only source of priority right here is he does go Beedrill, actually. Uh, only takes 25% from that because I think he does quad resist it. But... Um, Honestly, I think I'm just going to go for it again. Uh, do as much damage to this thing as possible as he does go for the U-turn. That only does 27% to us. And uh, he brings in his Rotom. And I'm going to go for another Mach Punch right here. Knock this thing down to 3% as he goes for an Overheat and misses, unfortunately. So that's going to put him in a very bad position. Uh, because now without his Rotom Heat, he no longer has a switch into that Mach Punch. Uh, chooses to go into Infernape, so good play. I'm going to go straight into Nido King. My opponent does not have a Psy Shock switch in anymore, as you guys can see. And uh, I'm going to let this thing go down to the close combat. If he is locked in, uh, we don't see Life Orb, so if I feel like he is locked in. I'm going to go into Espeon right here. I'm just going to throw out a Psy Shock at this point. He should sack his own Espeon here, as he does. And uh, now I have to play around this Beedrill going for U-Turn. I think that is what it's going to go for. So I'll just go into Conkelder here. And... Um, He's going to go for the U-turn, so that means I get off a Mach Punch on this turn. And I'll let Conk go down at this point, that's fine. He does go into Infernape, Harambe Smash. And uh, I'm going to Mach Punch this thing for 69% <laughs> as he goes for a Flare Blitz and knocks himself down to 16. Again, I can just go into Espeon. If this thing is um, Choice Scarfed, are we in a bad position? No, I do not believe so. I'm going to go for a Psy Shock. Okay, he goes for Flare Blitz. He does take himself out to Recoil. That's what I was wondering, uh, if that was going to happen or not. Um, Heliolisk is weak to Fire, so Inferni pretty much just wins at this point. I'm just going to go for the Flare Blitz, unless he has dual Scarfers, which, I mean, he could. Uh, he does let his uh, Heliolisk go down right there. He didn't really have a choice because it wasn't outspeeding me. And uh, Inferni is going to pick up yet another win right there. 
So the team looking very solid with the two fighting types. Uh, we do go up against our hardest challenge yet, a Crobat. Uh, <laughs> that thing is uh, is hard for me to take on, but Needle King actually puts in a ton of work this game, guys. Oh my god. If I can bounce back his webs, that would be amazing. Uh, I'm actually gonna... <laughs> I did this to, to somebody while I was testing the team. I'm gonna lead off with Espeon. He actually leads with Entei. Okay, that's cool. Um, I may just go for a Psy Shock right here. I don't lose anything. He doesn't have a Dark type. Uh, and I don't have a switch into this either. <laughs> I could go into Hydreigon technically, but like I don't really want to do that. So let's go for Psy Shock. Let's weaken this thing to 61%. He goes for the Sacred Fire. Does knock us out with the crit. Crit definitely didn't matter. He's Life Orb uh, as well, which is great information. As now I can go into probably Infernape, I think. Well, he's going to E-Speed me, right? One way or another. So let's go... Let's go Hydreigon since we resist the hit, uh, and let's just fire off a Dark Pulse. He doesn't have a resist on his team. He has no switch-ins to this. He should E-Speed in theory, um, because we could be faster than him. He actually does choose to switch out into his Gyarados and take 56%, so that's awesome. Uh, it is Leftovers as well, which means we know that it uh, actually it could outspeed us. Well, let's go for Draco, knock this thing out. Uh, I actually misclicked Draco there, guys. I don't know if you noticed, I was going for Dark Pulse. I didn't mean to lower my own special attack. As now my opponent's going to go into Galvantula. This is pretty much free webs for him. Uh, so I'm going to U-turn out, predicting the webs. Break this thing Sash. And uh, we're going to go straight into Aggron. And I am getting up my own rocks right here. Uh, if he goes for a Thunder, he does do a lot to us. And he can potentially uh, para us, but... Uh, he actually only does 42%. He does get the Paralysis, but we are able to get up rocks. So I'm just going to go for Roar, uh, hoping that the Dawn Fan comes out, which it does, as we get fully parrot. So very unfortunate right there. Uh, I'm just going to spam Stealth Rocks uh, at this point, if he wants to uh, Rapid Spin them away. Just going to keep going for that. He goes for Earthquake, though. Good play. And uh, he should go for it again. So yeah, let's just Stealth Rock again. Uh, he does go for the Rapid Spin, as we are able to Stealth Rock. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to Heavy Slam him. Uh, if he wants to Rapid Spin, that's fine. Basically, I just want to break his Sturdy and uh, see if he's Leftovers, which he is. And now on the um, on the Earthquake, I'm going to Hydreigon, as he does Earthquake. Awesome. Okay, so we're taking something else out with us right here with the Dark Pulse. Uh, here we go. He does go for the Ice Shard. That is not enough to pick us off. And we will go for the Dark Pulse. I don't know if the crit mattered, because we are max special attack modest. Uh, it might have mattered, but... Uh, anyway, we die to rocks, so there's no point in me switching this out right here. He does go for the Bug Buzz. With the webs up, though, um, this is a little bit of an issue. Like, this thing right here. Uh, I think I have to go Conk and knock off. I think that's my best play. Yeah, I'm going to go into Conk Elder and just knock off. There's nothing else I can do. I think I might actually lose this one. Anyway, this is our fourth game, uh, technically third, and uh, we're only 18 minutes in, so this is pretty good. I love my UU lives, they're always so fast. Goes for the Thunder, does a lot, and he does get the para once again, so that's great. Um, I'm gonna get rid of the Focus Sash, that doesn't really matter. He goes into Crobat, I pretty much have to let this thing go down. Now the thing is, he doesn't have a switch in, actually no, I don't need to let this thing go down, I have an Aggron, what am I talking about? Uh, this thing cannot knock me out, at all. He goes for the Brave Bird, okay, never mind, he's banded. Um, if that's the case, then Nido King has to come in, and I pretty much have to click Ice Beam here. He does go for the Brave Bird. He's able to knock us out straight away. Wow. All right. So that's pretty much going to be GG. Yep. Banded Crobat able to come through. Um, and we get parried on that turn. So he parried both Thunders. I mean, it's 30%, but uh, that was a little unfortunate for us. If I wouldn't have been full parried against the Dawn Fan, I might have played it a little bit differently than just spamming rocks. Uh, because I think we are naturally faster as well, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Agron, 50 speed. Well, it's a it's a tie, I think. Anyway, I'm gonna try to get one last one here, guys. Make it a three and one. Well, we're already three and one, but we'll try to make it four and one. Uh, my opponent once again has a fire water grass core. This one looks a lot more threatening. He has a lot more balance on his team. But again, uh, Conk Elder just tears through. Um, and that's actually what I'm gonna lead with is Conk Elder. As my opponent leads with Whimsicott, uh, not too bad, not too great either. I could technically just go for the Poison Jab. I think we live a Moonblast, uh, if I'm not mistaken. From a Whimsicott, even if it's Life Orb. Whimsicott, uh, let's say Choice Specs. Moonblast does, okay, no. 
<laughs> we're not living. Going into Agron. It's my safest play. My opponent goes for the Moonblast. That ends up doing a lot. He may be choice specs. Uh, I kind of just want to throw out a Thunder Wave here. That's exactly what I'm going to do. My opponent goes for a U-turn. If I can Thunder Wave anything on his team, that's great. Slowing it down. Making it susceptible to Hammer Arm. He does go into Entei. That's awesome. Uh, we're able to uh, paralyze that thing. I'm getting up rocks immediately as my opponent goes for a Sacred Fire. Is not able to knock us out, of course. Does get the burn, however. Uh, I'm going to play off of a Para and just go for Roar at this point. Uh, he actually chooses to switch out into his Empoleon, so that's awesome. If we're able to roar him out into like Entei or uh, even this thing is not bad. Uh, he does reveal to be Leftovers, so let's take, take off this choice specs real quick. Uh, Moonblast is still and still has the potential to take us out, uh, to be honest. And that is adamant, and that has 48 HP, which I don't think we have. I think we have, we might have more actually. Hold on, yeah, I have 132 HP. Let me just plug that in real quick. 132. Yeah, Moonblast never takes us out, so that's kind of good to know. Uh, I'm just gonna go for the heavy slam right here as he goes for Encore uh, on my Roar, which is fine because now I go down. So. And please show me your Flare Blitz switch-ins. Uh, <laughs> I may, I'm just going to go for a U-turn here because uh, I outspeed Sceptile. If he goes into Gyarados, I, get, I gain initiative into like Hydreigon or pretty much anything I want. Uh, he does go into Gyarados, as predicted. And I think my play is indeed Hydreigon uh, every time. And we just go for the Dark Pulse. If he wants to go into his Whimsicott, that's fine. He does go for the sub. Uh, we are able to Dark Pulse this thing. He will see that we are Life Orb. Uh, this thing is losing health slowly. Uh, it is max speed as well, uh, which is good to know. As he goes for the Bounce. And I'm pretty sure a Life Orb Dark Pulse uh, to a Gyarados, like an Offensive Gyarados. Uh, offensive Dragon Dance versus um, Hydreigon. Uh, UU Wall Breaker. Let's make it uh, modest. I don't know if hasty is a plus special attack. Okay, that's good. Dark Pulse does 55 to 62. All right, we're going for Draco Meteor. He goes for the bounce. Does he get the para? No, he does not. We are able to land the Draco and knock out the Gyarados. Awesome. All right, so that thing's down. Uh, I don't have a good uh, response to his Whimsicott. He actually chose to go into Empoleon. Okay, interesting. Uh, I'm assuming he's just going to go for the Defog right here to get rid of the rocks, which is smart, uh, but his Entei is paralyzed, so we, we're going to go into Conkeldur, and we're going to pick up our kill right here. Um, Whimsicott is pretty high in health, but I can just go for Hammer, uh, hammer Arm. I'm pretty sure it's going to take a lot right here, as it does take 74%. <laughs> awesome. And uh, we can't stay in on a Moonblast, really. I'm just going to go into Nidoking. Uh, if he wants to go for a Giga Drain, that's fine. He does go for the Moonblast, so that's great. And his entire team is grounded, so that means Earth Power is coming out right now. Does go into Empoleon, sacks it off, awesome, able to get rid of that thing. Uh, so that means that what has a little more fun, Espeon. Definitely Espeon. And uh, I can almost freely spam close combat, honestly. My opponent goes into Sceptile, I don't think anything outside of a Leaf Storm is going to be able to knock me out, so I'm just going to go for an Ice Beam. Uh, as he goes for the Dragon Pulse, that is not able to take us out, and we are going to be able to go for the Ice Beam and knock out his Sceptile, which is yet another thing that could have taken a close combat from the range that it was at. My opponent goes into Whimsicott, I am sacking off my... My what? Do I sack this off? Uh, yeah, I sack this off for sure. He goes for the Giga Drain, that's absolutely fine. I can just go into Infernape now, and on, on this turn I'm going to click Flare Blitz. Uh, because he's only switching his Entei, and that's fine. If this thing is taking damage, that is a good time for me. Uh, he does take a little bit of damage right there. I'm going to go into Hydreigon because I don't need it anymore. As he goes for the E-Speed, we do not see a Life Orb confirming that he is more than likely Choice Banded, and we will go straight into Conkeldur. And now we will get our kill, for real, guys. Uh, I'm going to go for the... Jab might be the play. Uh, no, Hammer Arm's always the play. As my opponent sacks off his Whimsicott, which means now I can seriously just spam close combat. <laughs> so, I know I've been saying it this whole time, but, like, really, I'm just going to be spamming close combat. I'm going to go for the Hammer Arm right here. His close combat will not be able to take me out, not even close, and we will be able to knock this thing out. And we should, in theory, still be faster than Entei. So, uh, he pretty much has to E-speed right here. I'm going to go for the Hammer Arm. This can miss. This can indeed miss. Uh, we will see what happens, and we are able to land it, and that is GG, so that's 4-1 uh, and one for us. Uh, this team is really cool, guys. Uh, if you want to use it, take a look at the sets, pause it on your screen right here. This is the Conkeldur, the Agron, the Espeon, the Hydreigon. They all end in on. 
Nido King, and Infernape. So that's uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you again for watching. I uh, really appreciate all the uh, the love and support. If you guys could leave a like for me down below, subscribe if you haven't already. If this is your first time on the channel, definitely check out some of the other content. And uh, yeah, that's it, guys. I will see you guys tomorrow. Ciao.